Hi, this is Mariah. Welcome to your Daily Mana, Day 191. Today we're going to read Joshua, Chapter 4. Twelve Memorial Stones from the Jordan. When all the nation had finished passing over the Jordan, the Lord said to Joshua, Take twelve men from the people, from each tribe a man, and command them, saying, Take twelve stones from here out of the midst of the Jordan, from the very place where the priest's feet stood firmly, and bring them over with you and lay them down in the place where you lodge tonight. Then Joshua called the twelve men from the people of Israel, whom he had appointed a man from each tribe. And Joshua said to them, Pass on before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan, and take up each of you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the people of Israel, that this may be a sign among you. When your children ask in time to come, what do these stones mean to you? Then you shall tell them that the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over the Jordan, the waters of the Jordan were cut off. So these stones shall be to the people of Israel a memorial forever. And the people of Israel did just as Joshua commanded and took up twelve stones out of the midst of the Jordan, according to the number of the tribes of the people of Israel, just as the Lord told Joshua. And they carried them over with them to the place where they lodged and laid them down there. And Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests bearing the Ark of the Covenant had stood, and they are there to this day. Okay, so they took twelve stones out of the river and then Joshua takes 12 other stones that were not in the river and puts them in the Jordan next to where the priests are standing. What could that be about? Don't worry, we'll get to that after our reading. Reading from verse 10. For the priests bearing the ark stood in the midst of the Jordan until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to tell the people according to all that Moses had commanded Joshua. The people passed over in haste, and when all the people had finished passing over, the ark of the Lord and the priests passed over before the people. The sons of Reuben and the sons of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh passed over armed before the people of Israel, as Moses had told them. About forty thousand, ready for war, passed over before the Lord for battle, to the plains of Jericho. On that day the Lord exalted Joshua in the sight of all Israel. And they stood in awe of him, just as, just as they stood in awe of Moses all the days of his life. And the Lord said to Joshua, Come on, the priest bearing the ark of the testimony to come up out of the Jordan. So Joshua commanded the priests, Come up out of the Jordan. And when the priests bearing the ark of the covenant of the Lord came up from the midst of the Jordan, and the soles of the priests' feet were lifted up on dry ground, the waters of the Jordan returned to their place and overflowed all of its banks as before. The people came up out of the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and they encamped at Gilgal on the east border of Jericho. And those twelve stones which they took out of the Jordan, Joshua set up at Gilgal, and he said to the people of Israel, When your children ask their fathers in times to come, what do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know Israel passed over this Jordan on dry ground. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan for you until you passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up for us until we passed over, so that all the peoples of the earth may know that the hand of the Lord is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. So the Lord made a path through the waters not once, but twice, first the Red Sea and then the Jordan, so that the people could safely cross over to the other side, and they all took, well, each leader of a tribe took a stone representing his tribe and put it on the other side, and um, Joshua set them together to make a memorial so they could always remember this event of how God um, came through yet again, passing them through the waters. Now what about those other 12 stones that Joshua took from the land and put in the river? Well, Rhonda Balance actually did a very 
wonderful commentary that I think is um, worth taking a look at. So let's go ahead and read what she wrote. Okay, so here's the website, yesterdaysprophecy.com. And the article we're going to read is written by Rhonda Balance. She did it in 2020. Got questions. What do the 12 stones under the Jordan River mean? And the reference is from Joshua chapter 4. So let's scroll through here. We already know what the question is, so we can skip through that. Okay. The other 12 stones in the midst of the Jordan. You've likely never heard about the other 12 stones. The stones in the midst of the riverbed are seldom, if ever, preached about. But these 12 stones are something everyone should know about. They offer an important and motivating message. Let's hear it. We are told in Joshua 4 that while the priests held the Ark of the Covenant, standing in the middle of the Jordan River, Joshua was to set up twelve stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priests which bear the Ark of the Covenant stood. So that's Joshua 4, 9. The Bible does not tell us the meaning of this memorial, but I believe it can be reasoned and understood by typology and symbolism in the Bible. What I present is my biblical reasoning on this. I believe it offers a profound teaching as well as a warning and a motivation for all Christians. Consider this and decide for yourself what is the meaning of these 12 stones. The pile of 12 stone was never meant to be seen by future generations. They would never inquire about it. Once the Jordan waters flowed again, this 12 stone memorial would perish in the waters of the Jordan, just as the Egyptian army had perished in the waters of the Red Sea so many years before. This 12 stones was a memorial to God's justice. The typological lessons in this account provide an eternal but disheartening perspective. Understanding the Typology we know that God provided signs to his people to reveal himself, his will, and his ways, and to prepare them to recognize their promised coming Messiah. While the Greek mind seeks after wisdom, the Jews require a sign. That's off of 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 22. God also gave the Jews types and patterns for their understanding. God did not allow Moses to lead the people into the promised land because he had failed to honor God at Rephidim. Exodus 17, Deuteronomy 32, verse 50 through 51. Typologically, we can understand that Moses represented the law. And John 1, 17 says the law has no power to save or deliver man. God chose Joshua to lead, deliver his people into the land. Typologically, Joshua is a picture of salvation and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Joshua's given name at birth was Oshia, which means salvation. Moses later added an abbreviation of the covenant name of, of God, Yahweh, to Oshia, resulting in Yehoshua. Or the English name Joshua, which means God is salvation. Numbers 13:16. Joshua led the people into the promised land, and in doing so is a picture of grace and a type of Jesus. Jesus is the one who leads sinners into their promised land and deliver them from the wilderness of sin. The Stones in the Midst of the Jordan I propose that the twelve stones under the waters of the Jordan are a typological picture of all people who reject the salvation that God offers. They have not been delivered. They have not crossed over and received the grace of God. They remained under the waters and are not counted among those who have entered into their inheritance, their promised land. Symbologically, throughout the Bible, water is a picture of the wrath and the judgment of God. For example, the flood, Genesis 7.10, Hebrews 11.7, the Red Sea drowning of the Egyptians, Exodus 14.28, Hebrews 11.29, Jonah going under the waters, Jonah chapter 1 and Jonah chapter 2 verse 3, etc. Even the name of the river Jordan implies judgment. A.W. Pink wrote that the word Jordan can be broken down into two Hebrew roots. Jor or Yar, which literally spread, and Dan, which means judging. 
according to Genesis 36. Therefore, the word Jordan has a meaning of spread judging. Some also define the word Jordan as Yardane, which means descender. Hosea confirms the typology with God's proclamation, I will pour out my wrath on them like water. Hosea 5 verse 10. Many Bible verses present water as a picture of God's judgment from which we are saved. Psalm 18:16. He sent from above, he took me, he drew me out of many waters. Psalm 69 verse 14 through 15. Deliver me out of the mire and let me not sink. Let me be delivered from those who hate me and out of the deep waters. Let not the flood water overflow me, nor let the deep swallow me up. And let not the pit shut its mouth on me. Psalm 124 verse 1 through 5. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, let Israel now say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they would have swallowed us alive, when their wrath was kindled against us, when the waters would have overwhelmed us, the stream would have gone over our soul, then the swollen waters would have gone over our soul. Another illustration of deliverance from judgment, water, is in Jesus' commissioning of his disciples to be fishers of men, Matthew chapter 4, verse 19, and Mark 1, 17. They were to preach the gospel, and God would fill their nets with fish out of the waters. Twelve stones. The twelve stone memorial on the west bank of the Jordan was a picture of being saved from the waters of judgment. God instructed twelve men, one from each tribe, to take a stone from the middle of the riverbed, Joshua 4, 5, from the place of death, the miry bottom of the riverbed, beneath the waters of judgment. The Ark of the Lord, which typologically points to Christ, stood in the midst of the Jordan, holding back the waters and allowing the stones to be brought up and delivered to the shore as memorial and sign, Joshua 4, 6. But the other 12 stones, Joshua 4, 9, are another story. Those stones were covered by the Jordan. They cannot be assigned because they cannot be seen. Those stones are a warning. It was Joshua alone, a type of Jesus, who did the work of setting up the twelve stones in the midst of the Jordan? Joshua 4, 9a. Jesus is the judge of the living and the dead. Those twelve stones are a warning about death and judgment. If people do not repent and trust in Jesus, they will remain in the miry clay of a river and that river will overflow in judgment at death. Hebrews 9.27 And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. The twelve stones in the midst of the Jordan River represent the unredeemed who have rejected Jesus and are buried in death by the righteous judgment of God. And they are there to this day. Joshua 4.9b there is no redemption after judgment. These twelve stones represent all who die having committed the un unpardonable sin of which Jesus spoke of to the Pharisees and scribes. So what is the big lesson in this? The stones in the midst of the Jordan might still be there to this day, but they were quickly forgotten. Covered by the waters of the river Jordan, the children of Israel would never see them nor would they inquire about them. Those who do not belong to Jesus will perish. We do not want anyone to be covered by the waters of God's judgment. We want all to be taken up out of the miry clay and set upon the shores of deliverance. Jesus is holding back the judgment, but at death it will come. Share the saving grace of the Lord Jesus Christ with all who don't know him before it's too late. Tell them how they can be saved from the waters of judgment. Tell them how, through the work of Jesus, in saving and sanctifying them, they can be a memorial stone of remembrance of God's goodness and saving grace. Very well said, Rhonda. I couldn't have said it better myself. So anyways, uh, that concludes our reading of Joshua chapter 4. Tomorrow we're going to read chapter 5, The New Generation Circumcised the first Passover in Canaan, and the commander of the Lord's army. That will all be for tomorrow. For now, I just want to say thank you for listening. I hope you have a great day.
God bless, stay humble and true to the faith. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.